Imagine holding a piece of ice in your hand, not just any ice, ice that's seven billion years old, ice that formed around a star you'll never see in a solar system that might not even exist anymore, ice that contains minerals, organic compounds and chemicals that Earth has never produced naturally. Now imagine that ice is worth more than its weight in platinum, maybe more than diamonds, because it's not from here, it's alien. And right now, trillions of dollars worth of that ice is passing through our solar system at 61 kilometers per second. Comet 3I Atlas, 7 billion years old, packed with resources we've never touched, and it's leaving forever in just a few months. So here's the wildest question, what if we tried to mine it? Could we actually extract resources from an interstellar comet? What would we find? And would it be worth the insane effort? Let's talk about the most ambitious mining operation ever conceived. First, what are we dealing with? 3i Atlas isn't just ice. It's a chemical time capsule from another star system. James Webb Space Telescope found it's loaded with carbon dioxide. Way more CO2 than typical solar system comets. It also has water ice, carbon monoxide, carbonyl sulfide and organic molecules. Complex carbon-based compounds that could include amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. But here's where it gets interesting. This comet formed around a different star, under different conditions. That means it might contain isotopes we don't have on Earth, rare elements in unusual concentrations, minerals that formed under conditions our solar system never experienced. Earth's entire economy is built on resources that formed 4.6 billion years ago here. 3i Atlas formed 7 plus billion years ago somewhere else entirely. It's literally alien geology, alien chemistry, alien resources. And some of that stuff could be incredibly valuable, not just scientifically, economically. Start with water. The comet is probably 440 meters to 5 kilometers wide. Let's say one kilometer. That's roughly half a cubic kilometer of material, and comets are typically 70-80% ice. Do the math. 300, 400 million tons of water ice. In space, water is gold. It costs about $10,000 to launch one kilogram to the ISS. That's $10 million per ton. We're not shipping water back to Earth. Water is cheap here. But in space, for future space stations, lunar bases, Mars colonies, water is everything. You drink it, breathe it after splitting into oxygen, and use it as rocket fuel. Capture just 1% of 3i Atlas's water. That's 3 to 4 million tons. At space prices, that's 30, 40 trillion dollars trillion with a T. But this isn't ordinary water. This is deuterium-rich water from another star system. Deuterium-heavy hydrogen is used in nuclear fusion. It's rare on Earth, but might be more common in 3i Atlas. A kilogram of deuterium is worth $10,000 on Earth. If the comet's water has higher deuterium ratios, the value skyrockets. Next, organic molecules. James Webb detected complex carbon compounds. Scientists got excited for astrobiology reasons. But there's an economic angle, too. Organic molecules from space are pristine. No biological contamination. No Earth bacteria. For manufacturing pharmaceuticals, semiconductors, or advanced materials, ultra-pure organic precursors are incredibly valuable. But here's the real prize. Amino acids. If 3i Atlas contains amino acids arranged differently than Earth's, you're looking at completely novel biochemistry. New proteins, new enzymes, new chemical reactions that Earth-based life never evolved. Pharmaceutical companies would pay billions for that. One novel enzyme that synthesizes a drug more efficiently could be worth tens of billions in patents. And we're talking potentially millions of different organic compounds, each unique to its home star system. You couldn't put a price on that. Literally priceless. Comets aren't just ice. They contain rock and metal. Typically 20-30% of mass is silicate dust and metals. For 3i Atlas, that's potentially 100 to 150 million tons. What's in that rock? Earth comets have iron, nickel, platinum group metals. Rare Earth elements. But 3i Atlas formed in a different stellar nebula with different chemical abundances. It might have metals in ratios we've never seen. Maybe its parent star was richer in heavy elements. Maybe it incorporated material from a nearby supernova. Maybe it contains isotopes incredibly rare in our solar system, but common wherever it came from. 
a single asteroid called 16 Psyche is estimated to contain $10 quintillion worth of iron and nickel. 3i Atlas is smaller, but it's unique. The alien premium alone would make samples worth thousands of times more than equivalent Earth materials. Okay, so 3i Atlas is potentially worth trillions. Now the hard part, how do you actually mine it? Problem one, it's moving at 61 kilometers per second. You can't just land on it. You'd need to match velocities requiring enormous fuel. Delta V changes that need rockets we haven't built. Problem two, it's leaving. 3i Atlas passes Jupiter in March 2026, then continues toward the outer solar system. While it won't technically exit for years as it crosses the Kuiper Belt, every day it gets farther makes interception exponentially harder and more expensive. The practical window to reach it economically is extremely limited. Problem three, we don't know its structure. Solid nucleus or loose rubble pile. Mining solid ice is one thing. Mining a cloud of ice chunks flying apart as gas erupts from the surface. Nightmare. Problem four, the technology doesn't exist. We've never mined anything in deep space. We've barely scratched asteroid mining concepts. Mining an active comet at interstellar speeds while it's outgassing. We'd be inventing everything from scratch. The costs would be astronomical. Hundreds of billions, maybe a trillion. Multiple spacecraft, autonomous robots, processing facilities, storage systems, and redirecting extracted materials. All while the comet tries to destroy your equipment with temperature swings, radiation, and explosive gas jets. So would it be worth it? Financially? Maybe not. The upfront costs are staggering. Timeline impossibly short. Technical risks enormous. No company on Earth could fund it. Not SpaceX. Not even national space agencies. You'd need a global consortium. Multiple countries pooling resources. Private investors gambling on payoffs decades away. Because even if you successfully mined 3i Atlas, you couldn't bring most back to Earth. It would stay in space. Used for space infrastructure. The return on investment wouldn't come for 20, 30, maybe 50 years. When we're building lunar bases and Mars colonies, when water and metals in space are worth their weight in gold, because launching from Earth is too expensive, then the 3i Atlas mining operation pays off. The company or nation that secured those resources would have a monopoly on alien materials. They'd control trillions of dollars worth of water, metals and organics already in space, positioned for use. It would be the most forward-thinking investment in human history. Except the tree is made of 7 billion year old alien ice and the shade is a thriving space economy. Here's the truth, we're not mining 3i Atlas. The mission won't happen. The technology isn't ready. The economics don't work. Not yet. But the fact we're asking this question tells you where humanity is headed. A century ago, mining asteroids was pure science fiction. Today, we're looking at interstellar comets and calculating their economic value. The next interstellar visitor might arrive in five years, or 50. But when it does, we'll be more prepared. Better spacecraft, better mining technology, better understanding of what's possible. And maybe we'll be bold enough to try. Because 3i Atlas represents opportunity, not just scientific, but economic. The chance to bootstrap a space economy using resources that literally fell into our laps from the stars. Every gold rush starts with someone seeing value where others don't. The California gold rush started with flecks of gold in a riverbed. The space age started because someone looked at the moon and said, we could go there. Maybe the interstellar mining age starts because someone looked at 3i Atlas and said, we could use that. We're not there yet. Technology needs decades. Economics need to shift. Political will needs to coalesce around long-term space infrastructure. But the resources are out there, floating through the galaxy, waiting, and sooner or later humanity will figure out how to grab them. I Atlas is just the beginning, a preview of what's possible, a glimpse at a future where Earth isn't our only source of materials, where the economics of space expansion are fueled by resources from other star systems, where alien isn't just scientific curiosity, but industrial commodity. So what if humans tried to mine 3i Atlas? We'd probably fail. Costs would spiral. Technology would break. Timeline would slip, but we'd learn. We'd innovate. We'd take one more step toward becoming a civilization that doesn't just visit space, but lives and works there. 
and that, more than any dollar value, might be the real treasure this ancient comet offers. Not the ice and minerals it carries, but the ambition it inspires. The universe is full of resources. The question isn't whether we can mine them. The question is whether we're brave enough to try. So, what do you think? Should humanity risk everything to chase and mine a comet from another star, or wait until we're ready? Because 3 I Atlas won't wait for us. It's already leaving forever. If you dive into that mission head first, hit like and don't forget to subscribe, because the next interstellar visitor might arrive sooner than you think. And when it does, we'll be here to imagine what happens next.